this video we'll look at how you can group by quarter in SQL Server. In the queries I show, I'll be using the orders table in the Northwind SQL Server sample database. If you want to know how to install this database, then there's a link in the description below. Grouping by quarters is really useful. As you're probably aware, there are four quarters in the year. January, February and March is Q1, and it goes all the way to October, November and December for Q4. First, we need to know how to do a group by aggregate function using quarters. And luckily, SQL Server has a built-in function for grouping things by quarters. You simply use date part and then put in QQ and then the column that you want grouped as quarter. So now we have the number of orders by quarter. And you'll see 1997 we have complete data for. So there's four quarters and this shows the number of sales in each quarter. Incidentally, if you're using date parts, you can use Q instead of QQ. This will also work. You might also want to remove the desk and put ASC and that will order the quarters in a different order on the year. I'll just quickly double check that this query is actually working. So we'll do select star from orders where year is 1996 and the quarter is number four. We had 82 orders in that quarter of 1996, so let's just check that that works. So there are 82 rows returned, so this query is okay. Now I'll show you a query that's widely circulating online and claims to compare the data from different quarters. So I'll just quickly run this. And the nice thing about this query is that it compares the quarter with the previous quarter. So this query is pretty similar to the previous group by query I showed. This time though, we're using the lag and partition by functions. So lag is a very useful function. There's also a very similar one called lead, but lag will actually allow you to retrieve the previous row from a result set. So here we use it to return the previous quarter's data. If you want to compare months or quarters or years with previous years, quarters or months, then lag and lead are very useful functions. I put a link to their documentation in the description below. So as you can see, in 1998, the second quarter shows that the previous quarter, i.e. the number here, 182, is now in the previous quarter column. So this is potentially a very useful query. However, as many people have pointed out, there is an obvious flaw in it. Can you see what the problem is? So the problem, of course, is that when the year changes, it doesn't compare Q4 in the Q1 of the following year. So 1997, one doesn't get the data from 1996, quarter four. So with a bit of experimentation, I've come up with a better query and I've linked my new query to the description below. This is my query. Again, it is linked in the description below. Now we'll find that the, let's see, where does the year change? So 1998, January to March, the data from the last quarter, Q4 of the previous year, is now there. So that will work for everything apart from the very first year and quarter we have, which is 1996 Q3. We don't have any data, so this one is null. So what have I done differently in this query? I've actually used the concat function, which just joins strings together. We have the year and quarter column here, and then I can order the results set by this quarter and year combined. So this query, as you can see, is much better because it does compare all the quarters with each other. You could actually modify this query if you want to compare months with each other instead of quarters. I'll try and do a new video about that, so I'll link that to the description below once I've done that one. I think the main difference with this query and the previous one is that I removed the partition by and I've just put an order by. I hope you found this video useful. Certainly, if you're working in the world of finance, then being able to group data by quarters and compare quarters with previous quarters is really useful. Thanks for watching.